I always do that at the beginning of every one of these. Uh, good evening, uh, fellow councillors, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this meeting of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee on the 26th of March, 2024. I would remind all members that the, and anybody watching, that this meeting is being recorded and will be available to view on YouTube. Join the queue for that. Um, the apologies that I've had so far are Councillor Claymore and potentially Councillor Cook for late arrival. Are there any other apologies? Not that we're aware of. Thank you very much. The minutes of the previous meeting held on the 4th of March were circulated. Are they a true and accurate record of those proceedings? Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move my councillor. Yes, thank you. Oh, Dan. Yeah. Um, every, all those in favour? Thank you very much. I'll do it right. Have you got a black pen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, declarations of interest. Can I ask whether there are any interests to be declared? There being none, I would move on to um, update from the chair. Um, the only thing I wanted to say from the chair is that this is the final meeting of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee in this municipal year. And I did want to record my thanks for the members and the officers who have supported this committee throughout the year. I think we've done some good work and I just hope it carries on next year. Um, item five is responses to reports of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee. And uh, members will be aware that um, following on from our meeting on the 4th of March, I did go to Cabinet on the 14th of March to present the committee's recommendations around the housing assistance policy where Cabinet approved our recommendation to look at a proposal for, for providing extra resources to um, assist the assistant director with the backlog, and of course a review of the process, including how priorities are set. They moved an amendment to the second recommendation to read, so that it now reads, to look at uh, revising the housing assistance policy to include a provision to prioritise medically discharged armed forces personnel and to make that a priority. Are there any uh, questions on that? Everybody content with that? Thank you. Uh, consideration of matters referred to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee from the Cabinet or Council. Uh, report circulated with the agenda following a motion referred to scrutiny from full council in February of last year um, in respect of uh, loneliness and isolation. Councillor Maycock, I think you might be able to give us a little bit of background on that. Uh, yeah, Chair, so basically just before that item went to full council, we'd actually looked at this through the, uh, the committee here. Um, it's also been looked at through the wider wellbeing strategy so i don't think it'd be best use of the committee's time to look that, at that as a specific item one we've already looked at it but, but two it's being covered in a, in a wider strategy thank you that's uh, that's helpful context um i think in light of that um i see no merit in bringing it back to this committee it will simply form part of the wider work is everybody content with that Can I just ask where that is, where it is being looked at then? It's, look, it's being looked at through this committee, but it's, it's, oh, it's as in, part in of the wider, the, the full strategy. Yeah, it's a, it's a link in, within that. Questions. Okay, um, moving on to item six, update on health-related matters considered by Staffordshire County Council. The digest for January, I think, was shared, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, I'm not, there doesn't appear to be anybody here to provide an update from Staffordshire County Council, and I'm not sure that we've received any written updates, have no, we? No, no. Right. Um, moving on to the annual report, item seven, uh, 
Um, the annual report um, is to be presented to the Council in the new municipal year to summarise the work carried out by this committee in 2023-24. Have people seen the annual report? It was circulated. Are there any questions on it? Yeah, Chair, just uh, asking if the stuff from the last cabinet is yeah. going to be yeah. fed into that. This, this meeting, and this meeting, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Yeah, so it's to be updated with the proceedings at cabinet and at this committee. Um, so it is recommended that the committee is requested to consider and comment on the draft annual report. I think we've done that. Introductory report and thereafter endorse the annual report and introductory report for submission to full council. Can I have somebody to move that? A seconder? All those in favour? All those. <laughs> All four of us. <laughs> okay. Um, moving on to the the substantive item on the agenda, uh, which is a safeguarding update. And welcome to Councillor Summers as the portfolio holder. Um, and I think you're going to lead us off very quickly on this, are you? Very quickly, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so yes, uh, Tamworth Borough Council uh, has a legal responsibility to safeguard children and adults with care and support needs from abuse and neglect. And we have a policy, the safeguarding children and adults at risk of abuse and neglect strangely enough, that's, uh, that covers this. Um, the idea of this report uh, is a biannual update to committee, the last one being in October. Of course, that's a municipal year, and it doesn't seem like five minutes since I was last sat here with Jackie uh, going over this. So uh, for um, expert uh, commentary and analysis, though, I will hand over uh, to Jackie Hodgkinson, our uh, uh, I've had it in my head then. What's your official title? Your Partnership Vulnerability Officer. <laughs> I was so well prepared as well. Thank you, Jackie. It was going so well up at that point, wasn't it, really? Uh, Jackie, over to you. Okay, so um, hopefully you've all had copies of the report in front of you. So, as it says, it is a bang annual safeguarding update um, in regards to what's happened over the last sort of um, few months. So, as you can see, the, the referrals have come in and um, we've had no children referrals this quarter that's not to say that there is not concerns about children it's just the fact that they haven't hit the threshold to come in um, to Tamworth Borough Council for a concern or a worry. Adult referrals um, since the report was put in place we've had um, six adult safeguarding referrals now that have come in and um, so that gives us a total of six referrals quarter four at the moment. Quarters will end 31st of March and obviously then we go into the new quarter in April. Miscellaneous, again, um, we've had two more miscellaneous referrals. So when we talk about miscellaneous, that is basically somebody can contact customer services through our compliments and complaints, put an email about concern or worry about an individual or a family or a property, and obviously that will get sent through um, the council's email system. And if there's a safeguarding sin that's being flagged, obviously through training staff have identified that and they will contact myself to have a conversation about the concern or the worry. Doesn't necessarily mean it will automatically go to a referral. It just depends obviously on what the information is that we know about that particular individual or that property in regards to that. Um, if it doesn't hit the threshold for safeguarding, that's not to say that we're not gonna do anything with it. There are lots of different avenues that we can look at and support. So one of those avenues potentially could be through the Tamworth Vulnerability Partnership meetings that we've got in place. It could be just conversations with our colleagues over in County Council. We've got very good networks with mental health, so it might be having a conversation with somebody in mental health and seeing if there's somebody who may already be known to that individual that we've got concern and worry about and then we work in partnership. I think one of the successes that I'm really pleased with is the um, street scene have been absolutely fantastic in supporting the safeguarding training this year. So we've had quite a large number of street scene operatives that have come forward, done safeguarding training, and they've actually highlighted some concerns within that miscellaneous as well. So they've gone out, they've done um, an inspection and they've noticed properties where they've been quite concerned about the state of the property from the outside. No, potentially that was being young children living in that property and then they've put a referral in as a result of that. So it's all word of mouth, it's getting out there and obviously it is being recorded appropriately. So we've got some really good work going on as a result of the safeguarding that we've delivered. We did have a safeguarding audit. Um, the audit was completed in um, January, and it just gives you a bit of an overall figures of what came back from the safeguarding audit in regards to what came in place. So as you can see, we're on a reasonable 
which is good in um, layman's terms. We've got everything in place that we should have in place for safeguarding. One of the biggest things was about the policy. So the policy is an annual policy that has to be updated annually. We're now on version 19 of the policy. The only change within the policy is obviously the change within leadership within the partnerships team. So um, Tina Mustafa has now been replaced with the Deputy Safeguarding Officer of Lisa Hall, who's my line manager. And then obviously we've got Joe Sands, who's the director above who takes over safeguarding as well. Um, some new things to mention as note that haven't been mentioned previously. So we're now part of the tenant consultation group meetings. So I'll be going along to give a presentation to the tenants within some of our properties around safeguarding, things to be aware of, to look out for support mechanisms, referrals as a result of that. Um, we're still an active member of the Adult and Children's Safeguarding Children's Boards. We're just in the process currently of updating our Section 11 audit. So the Section 11 audit is broken down into different categories that the board asks us to look at as a particular priority that they want us to work with in. So what we've decided this year is um, myself and other district and borough representatives who take on the Leave for Safeguarding are going to come together and have a team's meeting to discuss, obviously, the audit requirements, what we've got in place and how we evidence that. So we're sending the same picture across that we do within the districts. And again, it shows that joint up approach and that partnership work and that we put into place. We've been very, very lucky over the last few months as well. We've had lots of free training that's been offered to us as well at no cost. So we've had hate crime presentations that have been delivered free that staff members, yourselves, have been able to access um, online. There's been really, really um, good um, results as a result of that. And as you can see from USO, which is Crimes Against Hate, you can see the referral tables of people that have made referrals into USO about concerns around hate crime and make crime of people that have come about. <laughs> Um, we've also taken on board and we are going to be part of the DAHA, which is the Domestic Abuse Alliance Group, Housing Alliance. So it makes sure that we're making ourselves aware of what our responsibilities within our housing stock are for our tenants and our future tenants that are coming along. So they know about support mechanisms that we've got in place, referral mechanisms. And it's also making sure that our policies and procedures are fit for purpose. So this is something quite new. And obviously we'll update our, on that on the next um, briefing that we come to because it's a new area for me to work in as well but it's really exciting it's something that we should be proud of that we're part of as well and then we have the regular updates along with modern day slavery which is obviously a recommendation and requirement that we have to have a modern day slavery statement that's in place and that's still very current today to so making sure that we're aware about our modern slavery requirements community safety forum continues to run our next forum will hopefully be towards the end of april beginning of may we've now um, recruited a new partnership officer that will take the lead with the community safety forums that's an opportunity for all agencies partners voluntary groups to come along and obviously feed in around community safety priorities that we have in place for tamworth and as you can see from the last community safety briefing that we did we had tamworth street angels came along and gave a presentation about the work that they do within the community and what was really good in regards to their presentation is they actually recruited six new volunteers as a result of coming along to um, the community safety forum as well. So it just gave people an understanding of what their role was, what they do, how they support vulnerable people in the community, especially at night time as well. Contextual safeguarding, so we're still part of the MACE panel. MACE is a quarterly forum that comes together with a range of professionals to talk about concerns around trafficking um, of young people for the purposes of county lines, which is the criminal exploitation of young children for drug trafficking. It also does involve elements of sexual exploitation as well. The majority of young people that we see coming to MACE are usually between the ages of 14 and 15 years of age. So they're at that age where they're under the age of legal consent, but they're very promiscuous in their activity. Um, they're at that age where they challenge the boundaries quite a lot. They take, take a lot of around authorisation or authority, so they need some help and support. And obviously, it's a really stressful time for those young people because they're coming up towards the GCSEs, deciding what's going to happen for the future. So they can be quite vulnerable and have their own mental health needs as well. So we do lots of work with County Council around supporting the work around um, exploitation of young people and working with our partners around that. Prevent, again, um, we've been very lucky and fortunate that we can access free Prevent online training as well. So we do have Prevent training that we offer on Astute. All um, staff members, members should have completed some level 
of prevent training to understand what prevent actually is around contest and obviously the mechanisms for terrorism and being drawn into terrorism, terrorism and radicalization there is also lots of free courses that we offer to staff members as well through the home office and once they've completed that course all they have to do is print off a certificate send that to hr and obviously it proves that they're aware of what prevent is in regards to that as well so again it's something that we constantly roll out we are aware of it and lots of work is in place now with our community and cohesion officer and also our assistant director as well tvp continues to run very successful um tvp we have lots of partnership agencies that attend tvp we have a lot of referrals that don't actually come from tamworth borough council staff they do come from outside agencies majority of our referrals do come from adult social care adult learning disability team and mental health to see what other services are involved so again it's that partnership approach that joined up approach um, as of january we've had 18 referrals into tvp and you've just got a little bit of a list of a breakdown of what the primary issues were so we've got domestic on their mental health, vulnerability and community safety. We also link in the TVP to what was previously known as um, antisocial behaviour actions against young people. So we now link that in as well because we've got the partners around the table and it makes sense to obviously do a joined up approach around community triggers or and um, any concerns around antisocial behaviour as well. And if we feel the need to move on, then we can move on to professionals meetings and have those conversations outside with a group of professionals and put a plan of action in place and a lot of that will then feed into as it says below the anti-social behavior coordination group so that's a weekly meeting where again um, any agency that has any concerns around anti-social behavior within the borough of tamworth is very welcome to attend to feed in to give information and to support the work that we do it's a teams meeting as well so it's not as if we have to be office based so anyone can log on to the teams come in give their information support us and then obviously have a plan of action that's in place around antisocial behaviour as well. And that's basically it in a nutshell. <laughs> well, that was a whistle stop to her. That was a nice <laughs> one, thank you. Any, any questions? I thought it was a very comprehensive report. Councillor Dean. Thank you. Absolutely fabulous report and well presented. Thank you. Brilliant, loads and loads of information there. Absolutely loads going on. The one thing that I was worried about um, was the first bit, if I can get back to it. Um, that's why I like my paper. The safeguarding statistics, yeah. where it has to reach a certain level to get a referral. Uh -huh. I, I was concerned about what the numbers were behind that of how many didn't make the grade, but we still had concerns about Yeah, so basically our miscellaneous is the ones that don't go into safeguarding. That, that's the only ones then there are yeah no so the other, all those all those ones that you see in front of you on that chart there they've all hit the threshold to go for a safeguarding referral right. that have come in the miscellaneous are the ones that go into miscellaneous because they haven't hit the threshold right. for safeguarding so it, be, it may basically be that we go out and do a safe and well check on an individual just to find out um, mm -hmm. unfortunately we do have a lot of neighbor disputes where it's tattletale where one neighbor will say something about somebody else because i've had a neighbor who fall out and they'll accuse them of doing something and then we found out it's completely malicious in regards to that but obviously we have a duty to go out and just investigate it and just make sure that we're happy um from from what we see and what we know in regards to it um, and if we do make a referral into safeguarding and it still doesn't hit the threshold, it still gets recorded in the safeguarding file that we have made that referral. So there's no comeback on us if it ever does, um, unfortunately, turn into something that's, you know, quite horrific or quite nasty. So we still have a record of that, even if it doesn't take it. But miscellaneous is basically a miscellaneous where we can't always make a referral because we haven't got enough information. In regards to it, it may be very lacking in the information that we've given. Unfortunately, when some people do contact us through online, they don't give us their proper contact information to go back to them to get further information from them. So again, it's just through partnership working and speaking to you know the police, mental health, adult social care, children's social care, um, professionals, our neighbourhood wardens, our tenancy staff to see if you know that that is an area of concern. If it is one of our properties, if we can go out and do it a, a safe and well, just to see what's going on. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, brilliant report, and I loved the so the number of links about joined up approaches and everyone not working together for the best. Um, day jobs in a secondary school. So when you're saying about county lines and the age of the students, yeah, we've seen it in hours, and it's that like bless them. 
they think they're the kings of the world, but they're not. <laughs> they're young, they're vulnerable, it's ahead of them. Um, there was a lot of mention of county, but obviously with academies, they're the kind of own world now, mine is no exception. Is there much school feed into that project? Absolutely. So predominantly it is schools. It is potentially all schools. Um, one of, again, another success for us is, and it's taken us a long time to, to get them on board, we've actually got Kettlebrook Pro, yeah. which now attend the ASB coordination group because there's a lot of crossover with a lot of those young people who are known to MACE, who will also be known to antisocial behaviour because of the activity that they're getting involved in <laughs> and potentially they'll be known to safeguarding as well. So again, it's about joining up those dots in regards to that as well. So yeah, it's you know, we've got a lot more county representatives that are, are coming on board with our with the things that we do in house within the borough council and saying, you know, it's really useful for us. And I think that's one of the good things about the community safety forum because it's open out to everybody and it's a great opportunity because we've got back to networking and I think that's so invaluable having that face to face conversation seeing names to people, recognising and taking down contact details. And then obviously you've always got that link person to go to, just having an email or a contact number is really, really useful and helpful. Uh, one of the things I do in, in my time is I, I sit as a trustee of the Equalities and Inclusion Partnership. And one of the major programmes of work this year has been about cyberbullying and cybercrime. Where, where is that um, it's being picked up, obviously? Where is it being picked up mainly at the moment? So a lot of financial abuse you usually find is through, obviously, the internet, internet fraud, fraud link crime as well. A lot of our more people that are coming through are predominantly um, people that have been financially abused by carers or family members. So again, it's a huge piece of work that we do with the Adult Safeguarding Board. Um, it's within our policies anyway. We talk about financial abuse and we talk about obviously abuse of trust. We talk about it within our whistleblowing policies and procedures. We talk about it within our staff code of conduct. You know, it's something that's the same pattern that follows through in regards to it. Um, there are extra training modules that we offer to staff if they feel it's something that, you know, it's current and relevant to them for a lot of people that they're dealing with in regards to that. We're linking with our communities in regards to the, a lot of the work that the PCS are starting to do now around recognising it. Um, there have been talks in the past with post offices, with banks, about recognising potential cyber crime and obviously people that are fraudulent and things that are going on in regards to it. What's really, really difficult is, is the proof around it and um, the fact that, you know, if somebody's deemed to have capacity and that person's gives somebody a certain amount of money to do a task or um, something for them, it's about understanding in regards to it. So it's about making sure for staff members especially that they don't put themselves in those unnecessary risks. So especially like um, in our sheltered accommodation, we've done a lot of work with staff members around, you know, especially Christmas time or birthdays, you know, they get to know the clients, they get to know the customers in there. And it might be that, you know, they ask them to do the odd job. Can you go to the shops for me? Do you mind getting me some milk? Or do you keep the change? And it's like, does it make sense? Does it make sense if you're doing it? You know, what are the risk factors involved? So it's it's little things like that that have come out through through doing the training. That's what we're identifying now. We're actually pinpointing down to more of the specifics of what goes on in the areas that you work in in regards to it. And we give them a lot of scenarios to look at. And we ask those questions, is that the right thing to do? Is that the wrong thing to do? And we've also updated the safeguarding handbook within our tenancy sustainment to ask those questions. And I always say, if you're ever unsure, always ask. Always ask the question in regards to that. But yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of stuff that we do. We do link into Internet Safety Week. We do have a communications um, blog that we link in. So national campaigns, local campaigns, events, we put those up on our calendar. We highlight them and we talk about them and we signpost as well. And we talk about Crime Stoppers is obviously a first point to go to if there is a concern or worry to report it. Yeah, and where, uh, where children are concerned, mm -hmm. um, with the conversation we had was we can safeguard them right up to the bedroom door. But once they go in with their device, and they're beyond our, and they're, it's, yeah, it's it's a bit it's a bit of a grey area for me mm. being a parent myself. I, I do think parents have to take some responsibility for what they allow their children to and to not do, you know. And a lot of people have, have very different opinions about what they think is is right for a child to have mobile phone technology, having Xboxes, Playstations in the bedrooms, laptops, you know. Why, why they don't turn the Wi-Fi off at a certain point so they can't access those things, why they don't take the phone, I don't know and I can't answer that. 
But again, it's about that knowledge, isn't it? And I think that especially this is where schools play a vital part in that, in that education, because it doesn't matter how much, you, how much you educate a young person if you're not educating parents around what young people can access and what they can get on on their mobile devices as well. So education is absolutely key. And we're, we're only a very small part of that at the end of the day. We can signpost, we can put information out there, but we've got to remember we are not front facing. So it's really difficult. Any other questions? Okay, um, we are being asked if we're happy with the um, with the recommendations um, to move and second and then vote on them. So is somebody prepared to move? Thank you, Councillor Maycock. Councillor Daniels, all those in favour? Thank you very much, Jackie, and thank you, Councillor Summers, for what I thought was an excellent presentation of an excellent report. Thank, thank you. you very much. Right, um, looking at this, we've already done the Andrew oh, yeah, report. We did, we, yeah, we did it in the wrong order, didn't we? Item 11 is the forward plan. Listen, there's not, there's not a lot on there at the moment. <laughs> not, not much on there at the moment. It is the end of the municipal year, so we've got to take that firmly into account. Um, working group up to... Go on. You say it's the end of the municipal year, but some things are still set in stone when you talk of a forward plan. There are local, local plan deadlines, there are budget deadlines that we're, we know in advance are already. So it always, you know, it's been the same for as long as I've been here. You know, local plan never seems populated long term, but it's always surprised me given the fact there are some statutory deadlines to certain things that can be populated on the forward plan. But there you go. Like you say, it is the end of the municipal year, so better things to worry about. I frequently find that deadlines are one of the available options. <laughs> um, item 12, working group updates. Not aware there are any. No. Which takes me on to um, health and wellbeing scrutiny work plan. And that has been circulated. Is there anything that needs to be added to that? I couldn't see anything obvious. Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Nothing on this agenda item, but just while I thought the meeting was rounding to a close, just thought I'd say as a member of this committee, thank you for your chairmanship this year. I've thoroughly enjoyed the committee and I think you've given it your all, so thank you. I blush. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there any other... It's not on the agenda, but I do say, is there any other business? It's not really business for this committee, but... I'm conscious that Councillor Cook has said he's leaving us. I just want to say thank you for the help that you've given our group and for the um, information and experience that you've brought. It's been really useful. Thank you very much. You've not had the invoice yet. <laughs> You're welcome. It has also, from time to time, been hugely amusing. I have to say that to you. Okay, well, there being uh, no, no other business, can I um, close the committee and thank everybody for their hard work over the course of the last year. Thank you very much.